Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday to you. We're delighted that you've joined us again today. I hope yesterday was a good day. I hope that you were able to go out and do some things maybe. And let me just caution you a little bit now. You know, they have lessened some of the restrictions of where stores and businesses that will be open. You still need to wear your mask. You still need your gloves. You still need to be careful. And how? No more than 10 persons are to conjugate inside a building and no more than 20 persons outside. We hope that you have a blessed day. Receive these words this morning taken from Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Bob Christopher asked the question, do you know why grace is amazing? We think we sing amazing grace. We have been singing amazing grace forever. Many lives have been changed on the singing of that wonderful hymn, which is a snapshot for many persons' life. But Christopher talks about three things. He talks about how we hear, how we believe, and how we live. He said, believe grace is the heart and soul of the gospel message. And that was one of the things that made the Methodist Church so popular back in its heyday. Uh, the idea of grace, how God is willing to look beyond our faults and see our needs, and how God is able to extend grace to us that is sufficient. It is the good news, amazing news, as the song so adequately portrays, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Well, but sadly, in many circles, it's a word that has been watered down or has been regarded <laughs> as one among many on a long list of theological concepts. But that's not the case for the writer of the New Testament. To them, grace was everything. It was a rising in the morning and the laying down at night. It was a going through the day. Take Paul, for example. When he met Jesus, grace took center stage in his life. Oh, you know who Paul was. He was the one who was persecuting the Jews. He was the one who was even at the stoning of Stephen and who really gave the signal on behalf of the government that Stephen would be stoned. And he leaves that episode and he goes down the road to Damascus and there he meets Jesus. When this lightning came out of heaven like a bolt of lightning and struck him and knocking him down on his knees, a posture of helplessness, a posture of, of need, a posture of significance. Now, nothing else mattered to him, but that day he was knocked down and he perceived a new life. You see, from that point forward, he lived to tell others of this good news. You see, grace was not just a word to him. Paul saw grace as God's action in Christ Jesus that made him spiritually alive. I once was dead, but now I'm alive. Could be added to that song. That redeemed him and forgave his sins. That justified him and made him right with God. Made him a new creature, a new creature was sufficient for him in all circumstances. It helped him to produce fruit in his life. It taught him how to say no to sin and to live a righteous, upright life. Well, this is what grace has accomplished in your life as well. As you can see in this truly amazing, nothing else could have done all of these things, all of these wonderful things, given us all of the wonderful gifts than grace. You see, the same grace is available to you today, and as it brought up in the person of Jesus Christ, he is the one with full grace and truth. You see, take a fresh look at Jesus and, 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 and the work he accomplished through the death and burial and resurrection. In him, you see the fullness of the grace in God. It is the key to embracing your freedom in God. Oh, Paul, can you see what he did for the church? And then look at, look at Ed Newton, the person who wrote the song Amazing Grace. Here he was, the master of a slave ship, taking innocent persons and putting them in bondage and putting them in the hull of a ship. No food, no, 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 no air to breathe, no fresh water to drink, but imprisoning them and bring them to a foreign country. But oh, one night while voyaging to do that, I guess he could have said what John Messler might have said. My heart felt strangely warmed. It was grace. And do you know that uh, they never gave the title of the song that many of the slaves sang, but the tune of the song they were singing was Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. 
nothing but grace. And how amazing it is that it can liberate us from the bondage, the bondage of sin and death, the bondage of those things that keep us from being what God has called us to be and to do. I hope today that you experience God's amazing grace. You may not be able to explain it, but you can certainly experience it. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are so thankful that you have looked beyond our faults to see our needs. And as we go into this day, O oh God, we will have many needs. And we know that your grace is sufficient. And even though there are things we ask for, things that we just, just feel we have to have and need, you can say to us, your grace is sufficient. So let us be what you call us to be and to do in this day as we have the sufficient power we need to do great things in your name, we pray. Amen.